Hi, this is Amy from the Alti Store. I'm going to walk you through our off-grid solar calculator. Now, this is a great tool for a DIY solar system. If you've already got your loads list done and you know how many watt hours you need, then you're just going to go right to this calculator and we'll enter that information in and it will tell you how much solar you need, how many deep cycle batteries, and what size solar charge controller. If you haven't done your loads list yet, Watch this video to go through our loads list calculator because you really need to know how much power you need in order to figure out how much power you need to make. All right, so let's get going. There's several different ways that you can get to our off-grid calculator. You can either go from our homepage, altistore.com, and go scroll down to our calculators, and you see that it's right there for the off-grid calculator or you can go to our resources tab and again go to the calculators tab or if you've already done a loads list then you can actually get there right from our load list calculator so from our load, loads list calculator you'd scroll down and go to our off-grid solar system calculator and you'll see it's actually filling in the watt hours a day for you from that calculator if you didn't do the calculator you would just enter that in on your own so uh, the step two is to figure out how many days you need the system to run without sun. The number of days you cho choose will depend on your situation. If you're just doing a weekend cabin and you really just need it to be able to handle Saturday and Sunday without sun, then you're just going to say two days of autonomy. If you're doing an off-grid home that you want to minimize the amount of time that your generator runs, you might choose five days depending on how often it is that you would actually have a, a long stretch of bad weather. A common number that's kind of a compromise between them is to do three days and that will give you the ability to to run for three days without any power from the sun or from a generator and if you go a fourth day you would just have to fire up your generator. So the next step is um, what temperature you're going to be storing your batteries in. Now battery amp hour capacity is rated at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're going to be storing them in a room that's going to be cooler than that, and odds are pretty good you would, you would select what temperature you're going to be storing it in. So for instance, if I'm storing it in my garage, it might get down to 40 degrees out in the garage. So I'm going to select 40 degrees, and that will automatically calculate in any temperature durations I need to accommodate the fact that when a battery is colder, it's going to be able to hold less power than if it's warm. So the next one, it will tell you how many watt hours. So it's 12,339 watt hours. But uh, battery banks are, are, batteries are usually rated in amp hours. So what to, you need to do to get to amp hours is to tell it how many volts your battery bank's going to be. Um, if I've got a 12 volt system, I'm going to need a, a 1,029 amp hour battery bank. If I've got 24, it's going to be half that at 515 amp hours. Or if I've got a 48 volt, it's 248 amp hours, which is the number of watt hours divided by your 48 volts. Now you'll see the next line says three string configuration. If you are wiring multiple parallel strings of batteries, this tells you how many amp hours each string would need to be. Now you don't ever want to go more than three strings in parallel and that might actually even be pushing it a little bit. You want to keep your number of uh, parallel strings to a minimum uh, because when you wire batteries in parallel they're going to run the risk of charging and discharging unevenly. So you want to make sure that you've got uh, the fewest number of parallel strings. So a lot of people will actually try and just keep at one string. So if you've got 48 volt uh, battery bank, you can stay at 558 amp hour string. So you can go and take a look at some of the batteries that we've got available. We've got flooded uh, and sealed lead acid batteries, uh, both AGM and gel, as well as the, the newer saltwater technology from, from uh, Aquion. So you can take a look at the different battery types we have and select your battery from there. If I go back, I'm going to take a look at the next section. The next section tells us how many solar panels we need. Now, if you're in the United States of America, you can just select a city uh, from, from 
the drop down list here, and you would basically pick a city that's close to you. Um, here in, in Boxborough, Massachusetts, we're very close to Worcester, so I would select Worcester. And that's going to automatically put in the lowest sun hours for the worst case month, which here is December. Now, if I am not doing a year round system, I'm not going to need to calculate in December. So if I'm doing something that's in the fall, I would want to have a higher number of sun hours where that would really more accurately reflect the worst case that I'm going to be in that month. So I can actually go to a, uh, our list of maps, and this gives you a nice idea for worst case uh, throughout the world. But if that's too, uh, too broad of a view there, you can actually take a look at some of our other maps that give you other locations. So this really does drill in a little bit better for Mexico and Central America or for um, South America here. So we've got several different maps that you can take a look at. If you are in the US, uh, you can take a look at the cities here. And if this will give you your high, your low, and your average. So high would be your, your best in the summer, low would be worst in the winter, and average would be probably for spring and fall. So I'm going to take a look here. And Massachusetts, we're pretty close to Natick. So I'm going to take the average for Natick for my, my camp that I just used spring through fall. So I'm going to say 4.1 in the sun hours. So I'd go back to my calculator. And instead of the, uh, the 2.8, I'm going to put in 4.1. So that's going to tell me that I would need 436 watts, or 0.44 kilowatts. So I can just go down and say, all right, I'm going to get some 140 watt panels. Well, I would need four of them, and that would give me 560 watts. I can actually go and take a look at the solar panels that Alti has available here. And I can sort them by name, by number of watts, uh, by price per watt. So if I want to see what the, the best uh, price per watt is. And um, I can filter by brand. So I'm going to say, you know what, I think I'm going to go with some Kyocera 140 watt panels. Just go back, just stepping back and back and back to get back to my calculator. So I've got that 140 watt panel. I'm going to need four of them. And then the last thing it's going to tell us is what size charge controller I need. So I need a charge controller that can handle 12 amps because it took my 560 watts and it divided it by the 48 volt battery bank that I'm doing. So it says that I need 12 amps. Now if I were to have picked a a lower uh, voltage battery bank. So say I picked a 24 volt battery bank, it's going to say, all right, now I need that 515 amp hours, and I'd need a 24 amp charge controller. Because with the voltage going down, the current's going to be going up. So this just gives you a nice way to take a look at um, the, the general idea of what you would need. So this will give you a, a way to go over to our charge controllers as well. And you can look at the different charge controllers that are available. You can also go over to our solar power systems. And that gives you a selection of some, some packages that we've already put together. Now, since everyone's situation is going to be unique, it's not really one size fits all. But these will give you a nice starting point. So, for example, here is a 560 watt home power system. And it's got the, uh, the solar panels, the inverter, the batteries, charge controller, all of the breakers and, and uh, breaker boxes. So it gives you a pretty good uh, starting point. And then you would actually go in and customize it uh, for exactly what it is that you're trying to do. If you need to change out the, to a different brand, or if you see here, this has got a 12 volt inverter, you might want to have that 24 volt inverter. So we can help you uh, customizing this to be whatever you need it to be. I hope this was helpful. If so, give us a like and a share, and be sure to subscribe to our Alt Store channel. Also go to our website, altistore.com, where we've been making renewable doable since 1999.